organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, hear store owners' thoughts on the proposed ordinance to regulate the homeless population in the downtown Iowa City Ped Mall. And meet the freshmen, the block party Sally Mace had hosted for the freshman students yesterday. And in sports, our reporters are on location for the return of the Monday evening whip round. All that and more next. Daily Iron TV is ready to go. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for being with us this evening for Daily Iowa TV. I'm Christina Targos. And I'm Brad Maxwell. And flower beds are not literally beds. The Iowa City City Council is making that point clear. In a six to one vote, the council cleared step one of three for new ordinances targeting the homeless in downtown Iowa City. Daily Iowa TV reporter Rebecca Hager explains the dilemma downtown. Andrew Hunter plays tunes for tips. He spends his days in the Ped Mall and lives life to the beat of his own drum. I've traveled all over the country and I've been kind of homeless. Hunter's experience on the streets gives him a unique perspective. I know what works, what doesn't work. What he says won't work? The Iowa City City Council's proposed ordinances that would push homeless out of the Ped Mall. Some people need medication and some people just need a place to store their stuff so they can possibly go get a job. But storing stuff is one thing the new rules would ban. The proposed ordinances would ban sleeping on public benches, lying in flower beds, and using public outlets for personal use. Astrid Bennett, co-owner of the Artesians Gallery, supports the efforts to clean up downtown. She says the transients outside of her store scare away customers. We don't have as many people coming downtown as we used to. She says the behaviors outside her store are more than just a nuisance. We have had a lot of gathering for hours and with multiple possessions left a long time. We have seen public urination right in front of our store. But Hunter We're not drunks, not all of us. says he's not bothering a soul and until the city kicks him out, he will play his music downtown. In downtown Iowa City, this is Rebecca Hager, Daily Iowan TV. The ordinance would also make soliciting and handling in certain areas of the Ped Mall a simple misdemeanor. Despite store owners complaining about vulgar comments and actions surrounding the Ped Mall, that's not turning prospective tenants from purchasing the new condos in the middle of downtown. The new condominium complex is being put on the corner of Dubuque and Washington Street. All but four of the 12 condominiums have been sold. The hefty construction should come to an end by December. And if you're a returning student, you may have noticed the face of campus has been changing. And it's not over yet. To keep the art tradition alive on campus, the University of Iowa Foundation is conducting a $30 million campaign for the School of Music, the School of Art, and the School of Art History. The new music building is under construction on the corner of Clinton and Burlington. This will, be, this will serve as a new school for music. Future students can look forward to a modern feel with a glass exterior. The university can expect to move into it by summer of 2016. And just north of original Hancher Auditorium location, the new structure will have a new auditorium and a three-level lobby with rehearsal space. This project is planned to be done by December of 2015. The new art building will be northwest of the art building west. There will be new green features, working art studios, galleries, and faculty office space. This is projected to be completed by April of 2016. And last night, President Sally Mason helped the class of 2017 celebrate the beginning of the school year by hosting her annual block party. Freshmen were invited to enjoy food, music, and entertainment while preparing for the start of classes. Even Herky was there to fire up the freshman class by teaching them the school's fight song. The block party marked an unofficial end to the On Iowa program, which was established to help ease college transition for incoming freshmen. The campus is really big and I'm scared I'm just going to like end up somewhere and I won't be able to get back. On Iowa gives freshmen a glimpse into what campus life is like at the University of Iowa. I think it's important because it gives them the chance to 
know the campus before classes start, and it gives them a chance to make friends before classes start and builds community within the college. This year, an estimated 4,500 students joined the University of Iowa as freshmen. I still remember my freshman year like it was yesterday. It was a little bit intimidating at first, but I got through eventually. Lots of fun. Yeah, eventually you go to enough football games, you learn the fight song pretty quickly. Oh, definitely. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV. We'll explain the UI's tuition freeze in this week's political alert. Hear from a UI student from Egypt and her thoughts on all the riots occurring right now. And in sports, which former Hawkeyes are contending for NFL roster spots? And some schools in the Iowa School District were being let out early today due to the heat advisory. And according to Iowa's Education Department, 15% of state schools do not have air conditioning. And they wanted their students to get home before the weather peaked to 100 degrees. Marissa, is it still going to be this hot tomorrow? Tomorrow will be extra hot again. To start off the day, it will be cloudy with temperatures in the 70s. By the time afternoon rolls around, it will be sunny and reach 94 degrees. Tomorrow night will be clear and 90 degrees. So all you students on campus, be sure to stay hydrated. Looking ahead to the rest of the week, Wednesday and Thursday will still be hot with temperatures in the mid-90s. There will be partly cloudy skies on Wednesday, so hopefully those clouds can give us a bit of relief. Friday and Saturday will be sunny and hot once again with temperatures in the mid-90s. Sunday will be cloudy and 93 degrees. That's all I have today. Be sure to stay cool this week. Thanks, Marissa. We have our political correspondent, Reed Chandler, on standby with our very first segment of Political Alert. Reed, what's been going on over the summer for those who might have missed out on their political scoop? Brad and Christina, thanks. And to our viewers, welcome to Political Alert, our weekly Monday segment on Iowa State, local, and even university politics. Now students are returning for the fall semester after a hot summer. And just as Marissa had just mentioned, there is a major heat wave going on in Iowa right now. But if you paid attention to the Daily Iowa in this summer, you might have seen that Iowa is actually experiencing a freeze at the same time. It's called a tuition freeze, and the student body here at the UI has been fighting hard for it. You may recall University of Iowa student government initiating a day at the Iowa State Capitol last year to lobby lawmakers into approving the freeze. The tuition freeze was pr proposed to the Iowa's Board of Regents last September and approved in December for residents at the University of Iowa, Iowa State University, and Nor University of Northern Iowa. It took effect this summer. So how did this all become possible? The Board of Regents actually had to approve an increase in their own budget to keep the state tuition for in-state students frozen. That puts in-state tuition for this year at just over $8,000, but non-residents will still see an increase in their tuition this year of 2.6%, putting them at paying almost $27,000 a year. Though the Board of Regents has to agree on the freeze, it's not totally up to them. The Daily Iowan had its monthly sit-down with Sally Mason today, and she had this to say about how it happened. I've had a number of conversations with individual legislators this summer, and I've thanked them profusely for their willingness to partner with us, because it was really the legislature that made it possible. And UISG also plans to continue lobbying Iowa lawmakers to extend the freeze. President Catherine Valde told the Daily Iowan, it's all about starting early. She said, quote, we started this in August, and even before, we met with the governor and lieutenant governor in July. And so if we just kind of keep delivering our message and keep putting our voices into the conversation, I think that is how we can be most effective. You can read the full Q&A with Sally Mason in tomorrow's pages of The Daily Iowan, and that's also where you'll find a piece on UISG's plans this semester, including the tuition freeze efforts. Well, that's a wrap up for this week's Political Alert. I'll see you here next week. Brad and Christina. Thanks for that, Reed. And with the violence occurring in Egypt due to their ousting of the democratically elected leader, there have been many civilian casualties. Chelsea Brown sat down with a UI student, Elazar Hassanin, earlier today and discussed what it was like in the area. Hassanin described a protest she witnessed where things got out of control. Shots were fired, there was tear gas, and tanks that invaded to cease the protest. Even schools have been pushed back a month later and the curfew on the streets is 9 p.m. Hazanin describes her reactions on the crisis over there. People can't go on with their daily routines or like their daily life. They, there's checkpoints everywhere. They have to stop you, ask for IDs, check your car, check your like luggage. I just, it's really, there's no privacy and you don't have a personal life anymore at all. And our thoughts are with those affected by the violence in the region. And from Hawkeyes to the Pro Leagues, hear what our favorite athletes have been doing this summer with Daily Island TV Sports. Alyssa Bergamini, take it away. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. 
We have a lot to catch you up on this first day of the new semester, so let's jump right in. As always, we will update you on the big stories you missed over the summer. But before we get to all of that, a number of fall sports are already in full swing, with field hockey, soccer, and volleyball getting their seasons underway this past weekend. And what better way to get caught up on everything black and gold than by kicking it off with the return of our Monday Evening with Brown. Guys? Thanks, Alyssa. Welcome to Monday evening's edition of the Whip Around. I'm Danny Payne, here reporting from Grant Field, where yesterday the Field Hawks took on Missouri State, defeating them 5-2 in a contest. However, after the game, head coach Tracy Grisbaum said there's much room for improvement for the Field Hawks, as they owned specifically on penalty corners, where they only converted two out of 18 chances all afternoon. Now, for more on head coach Ron Rainey's soccer squad, we're going to send it over to Jalen Sochek, who's standing by at the Iowa Soccer Complex. Thanks, Danny. Head coach Ron Rainey and his Hawks are off to a hot start after the 3-1 victory over Western Michigan this past Sunday. The victory not only marks their second straight of the preseason, but their 20th consecutive non-conference win. Melanie Prickett was off to a dominant start, with accounting for the first two goals in Saturday's contest. The Hawks will return to action this weekend for a pair of matches against UC Davis and Pacific. And now we'll toss it over to Carver Hawkeye Arena, where our own Taylor Axelson has the latest on the Volley Hawks. Thanks, Jalen. Two nights ago, the University of Iowa volleyball team opened up their season with its annual black and gold scrimmage. They had the gold team had victories in all four sets, three to 25 points and one to 15. Senior Rachel Bedell had double digits in kills with 15. Bethany Yeager and junior Carrie Miller each recorded 21 digs. And sophomore Ann Yanda finished the game with 35 assists. This weekend, the team will be headed to Conway, South Carolina, where they'll be opening the 2013 regular season by facing Wolford, Youngstown State, and the tournament host, Coastal Carolina. That's it for us for Monday Evening Whip Around. Alyssa, back to you in the studio. Thanks, guys. While Stephen Eim has one more year left of golf for the Hawkeyes before he chases his dreams of playing as a professional, the senior got a taste of life on the PGA Tour in this summer's John Deere Classic. Eim was the first player in University of Iowa history to compete in the Quad Cities-based tournament. The Piazza Iowa native shot 200 par, but did not play in the final two rounds of the tournament after failing to make the cut before the weekend. Basketball season is still months away, but Fran McCaffrey's squad made the best of their summer tour in Europe. The Black and Gold went 5-1 and one on their trip through England and France. Aaron White led the team average in scoring, knocking in 13.6 points per game. Close behind him was freshman Peter Jock, who continued his scoring form from the primetime league, pouring in 13.3 points per game. London native Gabe Olashani also impressed in his home country, averaging nearly 10 points and two blocks per game. Finally, as the NFL season grows closer and teams try to trim their roster down to 53 men, a few former Hawkeyes are still vying for a precious team spot. Micah Hyde has seen starting time on defense for the Green Bay Packers and has earned lots of praise from head coach Mike McCarthy. Keenan Davis is already on his second NFL team, competing for a wide receiver spot with former Iowa teammate Marvin McNutt in Miami. And this just in, last year's starting quarterback James Vandenberg has been cut from the Minnesota Vikings after attempting to work his way into head coach Leslie Frazier's plans. Preseason cuts were also unfriendly to former Orange Bowl champion and Hawkeye starting quarterback Ricky Sanzi, who was cut after three years of service with the Kansas City Chiefs. A whole lot more coming up tomorrow, but for now, it's back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Alyssa. Daily Iowan TV is the only place to see what's going to be in Tuesday morning's Daily Iowan. You'll get more information on the assault that occurred over the weekend on campus. And after the Q&A with Sally Mason today, find out why this year's class is not expected to be the largest, but one of the largest in UI history. And finally, the university is switching email services from Outlook to Microsoft Office 365. Read about all the new features this service will give students. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.